All right, it's not that great for flying out at the moment, so I thought I'd go over something to do with batteries and chargers. I'm just showing here the two main chargers that I use. This is the T150 single output, highly programmable uh, LiPo charger, and uh, it can handle from 2S all the way up to 6S. I only have up to 4S type batteries currently, but what's nice about it, it's got a nice touch screen and you can adjust the current charge rate for that uh, balanced charge and you can also use it to discharge as well as knock down a charge to the storage charge rating for the battery type. It's kind of an auto sense system also so when you plug in a 2, 3 or 4S or up to 6S it'll actually guess at what the state of your battery is you double check that before you hit the start that's great little charger i use it all the time it's got a built-in fan the fan is noisier than hell uh, see one of my other videos of how you can reduce the noise coming out of this thing they also make a two uh, output version called the t240 which you might also consider it's a little bit more expensive this was about 70 dollars the dual output's about 100 dollars but the one I tend to use the most is this little guy, $30 HTRC. It's an H4AC. It's AC powered. It's got a built-in fan. It's got a built-in on-off switch. It's got uh, two outputs and the built-in uh, balance ports for from 2S to 4S. And I find I use this thing all the time. It's really quiet and it's quick and it does the job. What's interesting about this is it's got a, a up to 2 amp output on each side, each port. And uh, you can have a mixture of, of different battery types, of LiPo types, like a 2S. You could have one side and you could have a 4S charging up on the other side. And what it'll try to do is uh, to kind of share the load between uh, the two sides so that it uh, puts out the most current for... The batteries that are attached. So let me show you this in use. So when you first turn it on you'll see it comes up with a readout of uh, up to four cells and it's got the channel number defaulting to channel one on the left and the, the idle that's the status of whether it's either idled uh, charged or full and then underneath each cell is the volt the current voltage level and then the current level or the current rate that it's charging at will be in that lower left there as it charges it'll give you a readout of how many milliamp hours uh, that it's accumulated during the charging cycle so let me just take one of my uh, batteries here that's already been used I'll plug it into a little checker here you can kind of see on this little checker we're sitting at about 3.7 volts for each of the four cells so we'll, this is clearly needs to be recharged and I'll plug it in here and you'll see what it looks like when I first plug it in alright I got it plugged in coming up you can see it also gives you the current status of each of the cells just like I had on my checker right about 3.7 volts and uh, it's in the idle mode so what you do is <clears throat> this switch button here lets you switch from the channel 1 to channel 2 and then you have a separate button for stop start on each of the channels so if I hit start on this one channel 1 it, the status jump to charging and it's currently charging at 1.3 amps and then you can see the voltage level that's coming out to do the charging is at 14.92 and you see the milliamp hours accumulating over time so the time there's time actually up on the top here and what will happen this will go and then when it gets to that uh, fully charged rate it'll automatically stop it'll be full at the very top up there so you'll be able to write down how long it took if you keep track of that stuff and it also give you a readout of the uh, 
milliamp hours that it stopped at. The one thing that it doesn't have, it doesn't have a, a little beep or whatever. So the only way you can really tell that it's been fully charged is you have to go over and look at the status readout on the top up there. So that's how that works. So let me connect up two batteries and I'll connect up a second one here and you'll see what's going on there. All right, so as the first one's charging up here, I've connected up a, a, a 3S450 on the uh, channel two. So I'm gonna just switch that over to channel two and you'll see just like we did on the original, you see what the voltage level is on those three cells and uh, no time accumulated on that yet. So let's go back and see we're charging at 1.3 amps there on the left, the big pack. Now we're going to start the charging on channel 2. You can see channel 2 up there. Milliamp hours are starting to accumulate. <clears throat> it's charging that second pack at 1.3 and the time is building up there. So let's switch back and see we're on channel one, we're still at 1.3 amps. So that's the basic way this operates. Clearly channel two is most likely gonna finish first, uh, but you can tell in this example that the uh, each channel is doing about 1.3 amps versus the advertised two amps. All right, let me try another configuration. Okay, now I have two 452S batteries connected. And again, I'm using uh, an XT60 to an XT30 adapter, which you have to buy separately. They're pretty inexpensive, but you'll, that's what you'll probably need to do if you're going to try to use uh, two and 3S batteries that are using the XT30s with a charger that's set up for the XT60 connectors. All right, we'll power it on here. <clears throat> we'll see channel one is at 3.7 volts. We'll switch over channel two. Looks like it's a little bit higher charge already. So I probably didn't drain that down as much last time I flew it. <clears throat> so let's start channel two and see what it does. So he's charging on channel 2 at 1.9 to 3 amps on channel 2. I'm going to switch back to channel 1 and we'll get that one started. It's also doing 2 amps so you can tell when we get down to this 2S level that's when you can probably get up to that 2 amps of output from a, a pack and then uh, the 3S looks like it's more down in the the one three amp range. So something that's something you learn by using these things, but clearly it's not going to take that long to charge up these two S packs using this charger. And like I say, it's just that simple to use. It, you get all the information that you might want on here and it's good to go. So look this one up and add it to your arsenal. All right. Thanks for watching.